first target for Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles in Russia, expert named them. Great Britain and France confirmed that they allowed Ukraine to use their Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles to attack targets on Russian territory. The first likely target for attack could be the enemy airbase Baltimore, from which Russian planes are striking Kharkov with cabs. This opinion was expressed on Espresso by military expert, development director of the information and consulting company Defense Express of Ukraine, Valery Ryabik. According to him, in various modifications, the operational range of these missiles can reach 460 kilometers. Therefore, the list of targets on the territory of the Russian Federation is very wide. It can be assumed that one of the first targets that could be attacked by these missiles will probably be the Russian airbase Baltimore near Voronezh. This base is located in the affected area, even if we speak about the range of use of Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles at a distance of up to 260 kilometers, said Ryabik. The expert noted that there are a lot of targets that can be hit with Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles on the territory of the Russian Federation. These could be, for example, control points of the occupiers. A strike on the Baltimore Air Base would be quite logical, since it is from this airfield that the planes that drop cabs on Kharkov take off. In particular, planes from this airbase took part in the terrorist attack on the Epicenter Shopping Center. Also on the list of probable targets for Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles can also include a large number of control points and personnel concentration areas. The characteristics of Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles are more suitable for targeted strikes against the enemy, he stated. Recall a number of Western countries have allowed the use of weapons supplied to Ukraine for attacks on Russian territory. Operators of the Special Operations Forces, during aerial reconnaissance in one of the operational directions, discovered the location of the Russian mobile radar station, Kasta 2E2. The target was struck by one of the newest developments. It is noted that this radar model is considered an ultra-modern weapon, which is designed to control airspace, determine coordinates and recognize air targets, including those flying at ultra-low altitudes. The Casta radar was first detected on the territory of Ukraine in 2021 in the occupied Luhansk region. Then the Russians brought equipment to counter-attack UAVs. However, ironically, recently the vehicles of the enemy station became the target of attack drones of the Special Operations Forces, the military informed. In February of this year operators of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine destroyed the Russian Casta, 2E2 radar on the border with the Russian Federation. On February 13, 2024, Special Forces of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine's Husey 9 group struck a Russian radar station near the Russian-Ukrainian border. Given the interface of the loitering munition, a Polish-made Warmate 3.0 unmanned system was used to launch the strike. Casta 2E2 radar may detect of a wide range of air targets. Used in systems of air and coastal defense, border control, air traffic, and airspace control around airports. The radar is characterized by increased detection capabilities for low-flying air targets. Casta 2E2 Low Altitude 3D Omnidirectional Standby Radar is designed for air traffic control, determination of distances, azimuths, flight altitudes, and other traffic information of air objects, such as fixed and rotary-winged aircraft, remotely controlled aerial vehicles, and cruise missiles, including those flying at low and extremely low altitudes amidst bottom bounce, clutter environment, and hydrometeorological formations. The complete system consists of an electronic vehicle, an antenna vehicle, and a vehicle for electrical aggregates. Operator workstations, accessories, and spare parts are located in two single-axle trailers. A remote operator station can operate up to 300 meters from the system. This advanced radar, with a range of 5 to 150 kilometers and a 360-degree azimuth angle, provides comprehensive surveillance capability up to an altitude of 6 kilometers, with scanning intervals of 6 or 12 seconds, making aerial surveillance more efficient and precise. Houthis attacked U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and destroyer ship. The Yemeni Houthis movement has dealt another blow to the American nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Dwight Eisenhower, currently located in the Red Sea. 
This was stated by the representative of the Houthi armed forces, Yahya Saria. According to the report, the Houthis launched rockets and drones on the aircraft carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower and the American destroyer USS Gravely was also attacked. In total, the movement carried out six operations against ships and vessels of the American coalition and Israel in response to new coalition attacks in Yemen. It is noted that this is the second attack on an aircraft carrier. The first was carried out on Thursday or Friday last week. The second became known only today. At the same time, the Pentagon denies an attack on the aircraft carrier as well as any damage to the ship. One senior military official said he was unaware of a possible attack on the USS Dwight Eisenhower. At the same time, the US Central Command confirms the interception of two ballistic missiles fired by the Houthis, not at an aircraft carrier, but at the destroyer US Gravely. Both missiles were shot down and no hits were made. Houthi drones have also been shot down, but there are no details. Earlier, the Pentagon also denied the first strike on the aircraft carrier USS Dwight Eisenhower, which was announced by the Houthis. At the same time, the Yemeni movement claimed some damage to the ship. At the same time, neither side presented any evidence. The other four attacks by Houthis targeted three ships, Mena in the Red Sea, the al Oraik in the Indian Ocean, and the Abliani in the Red Sea, alleging that they had breached a ban on visiting Israeli ports. The US reacted to the Houthi assaults by labeling them as a terrorist organization, organizing a marine alliance to protect the seas and launching airstrikes on Houthi sites in Yemen. Despite US assertions that its strikes have weakened the Houthis, analysts say the increasing number of Houthi attacks on ships demonstrate that the strikes are ineffectual and that the Houthis continue to feel that their attacks have increased their popularity.